Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Munsell. This is Communicating Today. We've been on Channel 10 for a very long time, well over 20 years, well past 600 programs. And uh, we do come on for you folks who uh, follow us on a regular basis, come on three times every week, every Wednesday evening in prime time at 8.30 p.m., every Friday morning for you folks who are driving to work in the morning. You may not be able to see my show because you may be emailing or texting in your car, which you shouldn't be doing. That could be very dangerous. But also on Sunday afternoon at 3.30, for a long, long time, we've had many wonderful shows for you in the past. Tonight will be absolutely no exception. We have a terrific show for you with a wonderful, terrific guest that has been on our program for so many times before. But before I introduce my guest, I just want to say that if for you folks out there that, are, that may be writers, professional writers, or maybe thinking about going into the writing business and becoming authors and writing books and so forth. If you would like to envision yourself as maybe someday being an Ernest Hemingway, a John Steinbeck, a Pearl Buck, a Margaret Mitchell who wrote uh, Gone with the Wind, or a Stephen King who writes all those spooky novels and so forth, then you better buy and you better think about thinking of buying this book right here that we have pictured on our set which is entitled Improve Your Writing with NLP, which was written by my guest, our dear friend, uh, whom I'm going to introduce right now, Dr. Judy Pearson, okay. who's been on our show, as I said before, many, many times. In fact, she even was a substitute host when I couldn't be on the program a few years ago. She took my place and she ran the show. So Judy is a veteran uh, member of our Communicating Today show. Judy, welcome so much. I, I'm so thrilled and so proud to have you back on again. This is going to be a fun show. Thank you, John. I'm, I'm happy looking to be forward here. to it. And uh, now let me just tell you a little something about our guest. Uh, Judy is, uh, wears a lot of different hats. She's a counselor. She's a life coach. She is an author. Besides this new book that she's written, she's written four other books, which we'll mention briefly during our show. She's a speaker, she's a clinical hypnotherapist, and we'll find out a little bit more about what that's all about. She kind of hypnotizes people a little bit. She's a master practitioner of something and a trainer of something, which is being featured on our program tonight, Judy, NLP. You folks may not know what that means, but it has, uh, it's an acronym, and we're going to let Judy tell you what it means when we, when we turn the microphone over to her. So our guest is extremely versatile. And again, Judy, thank you so much for coming on for the umpteenth time on Communicating Today. My pleasure. And I guess we probably ought to start out uh, by finding out a little bit more about you. For those of you who may not know you, you were on the show many, many years ago with us many times. And I guess uh, family, uh, your husband is... Uh, My husband is a retired captain in the U.S. Navy. Right. And he is also an author. He's been on your show right. talking about one of his books. And his name is uh, Captain John Rodgard. And yes. may, people may say, well, you're Judy Pearson. He's John Rodgard. Well, you have your own professional name. Yes, that's which right. Which you decided to keep up unto uh -huh. yourself. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of people do that sort of thing, especially in the entertainment or show business and what have you. And uh, in order to get your doctor's doctorate, because we call you Dr. Judy Pearson, yes. you graduated from somewhere. I graduated in 1983 wow. from Catholic University right here in Washington, D.C. I, w I was brought up in the Midwest, but when I was uh, a young adult, I moved to this area, and I've been here ever since. Wow, that's terrific. Now, when you graduated, uh, I guess you, your, your degree was in was what? My degree is in mental health counseling. Mental health counseling, and uh, did you have a minor in something else to, to, to back that up, or was it pretty much just mental well, my, my bachelor degree was in social work, and I had a minor in fine arts. Oh. And then I had a master's degree and a Ph.D. in mental health counseling. I just have to, have to be satisfied with my bachelor's degree. I never got beyond that. At Drexel University in Philadelphia, my alma mater, folks. But anyway, uh, then you also, uh, I guess you had some, when you, upon graduation, uh, you didn't go right into exactly what you were doing. You had a couple of jobs, I guess, sort of in between before That's right. you finally started your own practice. Yes. For a time, I worked for a small corporation, and I worked my way up the ladder while I was getting my degrees. I was, I was going to school nights, and I was working for the corporation during the day as a project manager. And 
I ended up doing some editing, some proposal writing. Eventually, I got a job managing a writing project on a contract for the U.S. Air Force. I was managing a website and supplying content there uh, while I had started my practice. And eventually, I went into my practice full time. And all along, I was publishing articles and eventually started writing books, too. And I noticed that in your, when I was reading your biography that you have published like over 200 articles in various yes, publications. Over 200 articles and book reviews. And then the, the five books, including the new one here and four mm -hmm. previous books before yeah. that. I would say you've been one busy lady, Judy. I have been. Yeah. And have appeared on a number of television programs on my show and I guess yes. maybe a couple of other TV shows. A couple shows. of others, yeah. Whew, boy, I don't know. That's what I call wearing a whole bunch of hats, that's for sure. Now somewhere, and you mentioned about getting started in writing, one of the, the jobs that you did, you had an opportunity to write proposals and uh -huh. other kinds mm -hmm. of writings and all the articles that you submitted, the 200 articles that you wrote and so forth. And, the, and then you decided, I, I, I like this idea of being a writer. I do. And then you started to write some books and you wrote a couple of the first, the first four books, which uh, covered a period of what, how many years over for the four books? Well, the first book I got to write, I was co-author. Oh. Um, a woman named Kathy Corsetti approached me and she had an idea for a book on uh, fitness. And so I helped her write that book because she wanted an aspect of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, in her book. And so that was our first book and came out in 2000. In 2006, I, I located Crown House Publishing in Wales. And that may seem far away, but it turns out it they is. are the world's leading international publisher in books about neuro-linguistic programming, which is my specialty. Uh, NLP. So they published my first book, which was called The Weight Hypnotherapy and You Weight Reduction Program. It's a practitioner's manual for people who wanted to do what I was doing in my practice with people who wanted to use neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis to lose weight. In 2012, I came out, same publisher, uh, Crown House, again, I came out with Why Do I Keep Doing This? And it's a book on self-hypnosis and NLP to stop unwanted habits. My goodness. And now I have this one. Now we have the new book, and it has a, a wonderful title. As the folks watching our show can see, we have a picture of the cover right here. Improve Your Writing with NLP, which again, as Judy just mentioned, stands for Neuro -lingu Linguistic Programming. Neuro Linguistic... I almost <laughs> linguistic programming. I practiced that before the show, but here that's exactly what it is. So now I, I guess, and we're probably getting pretty close to the uh, midpoint of our show, Judy, and, and you've been on our show so many times, you know that this program moves pretty quickly. Yes, it does. And what I'll be getting is a signal soon from our floor director, Stephanie. We're not quite there yet, but when we get there, I guess maybe uh, this might be a good time to uh, uh, give a definition of NLP, of Neuro Linguistic Program. If, if you had to give a brief one or two sentence definition of what it's all about since you're so involved with it, how would we define NLP anyway? Well, Neuro Linguistic Programming means many things to many people and it's been around since the 1970s. It's in business and psychology, sales and marketing, and it's the study of how people organize their thought patterns, their internal strategies, how they talk to themselves, how they visualize, how they manage their physiology, their posture, their breathing, in order to get effective outcomes, to do what they want to do with their lives. Even how they get stuck sometimes and how to change those strategies so that they get better outcomes. So neurolinguistic programming is about behavioral change and it's also about communication. It's about effective communication, how we communicate with ourselves and others, verbally and non-verbally, to get the outcomes and the results we want in our lives. I'm so happy and so glad you mentioned that word, communication, because the name of our show, as you well know, yes. is Communicating Today, folks. Been on Channel 10 forever. And it so happens that uh, when it comes to communicating, which uh, Judy is an expert, Judy Pearson, our guest, is an expert at. I'm somewhat of an expert because it turns out that Judy Pearson and I have both belonged for a long period of time to a wonderful mm -hmm. organization called Toastmasters International.
There's also a, an adjunct organization now nowadays called Toast Mistresses, uh, habitated by, by the ladies, of course, but uh, been around for a long, long time, started way back in the 1920s, and it's all about more effective communicating. Mm -hmm. And I take it and I kind of sense that this NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is, as you just mentioned, has a lot to do with communicating. It does. You're a communicator, I'm a communicator, and I love doing this show, Communicating Today, which is what you and I are all about. And I thought I had to mention that uh, thing called Toastmasters because, uh, and you're still active in it, I, I retired from it when I started doing our program a few years ago. But uh, it's, a, it's a great thing, and there's another, there's another feature that, that comes to mind also that I like very much. There's one word that sticks in my craw that I love very much, it's called empathy. Empathy, of course, simply means putting yourself in the other person's exactly. shoes. Exactly. So that you understand and kind of feel where the other person's coming from, which is extremely important in communicating. How can you communicate effectively with your fellow human being if you don't know who they are, where they came from, what they're thinking about, what they want to do, what their goals and aspirations in life are, unless you can use this word called empathy and say, well, let me put myself in her shoes. Let me pretend I'm Judy, and then I, maybe that way I can communicate with her more effectively, and maybe I can be a better writer and be a better well, author. So true, because in my book, I talk about how to write for your reader, right. how to think of your reader, Put yourself in your reader's shoes. What does your reader want to know about your topic? Exactly right. So there that word come in, comes in empathy, whether it be speaking, communicating, uh, or socializing with another human being, or writing. Or writing. And that's what we're all about on this program today, folks. We're talking about how you, you folks out there watching our show, our listeners, and we hope there are, are legions of you out there, and that you didn't tune in late because I think we're getting pretty close to the midpoint in our show. Uh, Stephanie hasn't given me the signal yet, but I know we're getting close. When we do get to that point, we're going to reintroduce our program for you late tuner inners and uh, let you know what we're talking about. We are talking about this wonderful book that you see pictured here on our desk entitled Improve Your Writing with NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is espoused by our wonderful author guest on our show tonight, my good friend who's been on our program forever, Dr. Judy Pearson hypnotherapist, uh, counselor, author, speaker, uh, life uh, coach, you name it, she's done it all. And uh, she's written many books, she's written many articles, and this is her latest effort right here, this wonderful book that we're showing you. And I did get the halfway signal, and we do go back to the camera, Judy, for a few seconds. Sure. For you folks who may have tuned in a little bit late to reintroduce the program, we're called Communicating Today, I am John Munsell, the creator, the producer, and the host of this program, which has been on Channel 10 for a long, long time, since way back in 1990. Tonight, we're doing show number 664 with our very special guest sitting alongside of me, our dear friend who's been on our program for so many times before, our great guest for tonight's show, Dr. Judy Pearson. Judy, again, thank you so much for coming back again for the umpteenth time. Yeah on Communicating Today. And by the way, folks, we come on three times every week, Sunday uh, afternoon at 3.30, uh, Wednesday evening in prime time at 8.30 p.m., and Friday morning for you early birds at 6.30 a.m. When you might be driving to work in the morning, you may or may not be able to see our show. But Judy, we've been talking about this wonderful book that you've written, your latest effort. You've written four books before <laughs> that. And I read through this book, and I couldn't put the book down. It's a great book, and uh, one thing I like so much about this book, Judy, is that you give a lot of advice, <laughs> and you tell people that this is what they ought to do to become a successful writer, or if they are already an author, a writer, how to become a better one, and to become a, the next Ernest Hemingway, or Stephen <laughs> King, or Margaret Mitchell, or whatever. But you not only tell people uh, what they should be doing and give them ideas and suggestions, but the nicest thing I like about this book is you, you show proof positive. You say, this is how you do it. You give examples. Yes. You just don't tell somebody to do something. You say, this is how you do it. And where did you, where did, uh, that, that's a terrific uh, 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 trait in, mm -hmm. and that, you, that you have as an author and a terrific uh, trait in this particular book, which I commend you on. Thank you. Thank you. You know well, you, yeah, you know you did that. One way to make things clear to yeah. your readers is to give examples 
um, to give stories and analogies. And my book even has worksheets in it. Yeah. There's a worksheet for every chapter so that they can test out their own writing right. using the ideas in each chapter. But now, you know, when people become writers, and uh, I, I know I dabbled a little bit in writing myself, not nearly as much as you, the successful author and writer that you are, but occasionally, and people out there watching who are uh, uh, would-be writers and would like to become some of the famous authors that I mentioned before, run into something called writer's block. And they have this blank page in front of them, and they, they're trying to start on this writing project, and they don't know where to begin. How the heck do you confront something like that, Judy? And what ideas or suggestions might you have for somebody that might experience this terrible thing called writer's block? Well, I have a whole chapter <laughs> on how to overcome do. writer's block, and I call it slaying the dragons of fear. <laughs> because writer's block is usually based on fear. Fear of rejection, fear of embarrassment, fear of failure, fear of making a mistake. And that's the wrong attitude. You have to overcome those fears, and I tell you how to do that. But the other thing that's really important in this book is the idea that there are three mind-body states that are applicable to writing. There, and these come from, by the way, a study of Walt Disney, because the man who wrote about these uh, originally in 1994, Robert Dills, an NLP trainer and a guru in the field, said that to him, when he analyzed Walt Disney's work, Walt Disney used three stages of writing. The dreamer, where you're very creative and playful, getting your concept and your ideas together. Then the realist, where you put things down on paper, you apply your skills, you apply your knowledge. And then the critic, and that's where you go back and you evaluate, you revise, you edit, you look for mistakes. The problem with writer's block is that a lot of people start out with the critic when they should be starting out with the dreamer. They yeah. should have fun with it. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, and let me ask you this, as, a, as an experienced veteran author, have you ever experienced writer's block? Maybe way back in the beginning when you first started writing that first novel, you, or maybe some of those uh, uh, articles that you submitted, uh, the 200 writers. Maybe, did you ever experience anything? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, you, to you say, took your own advice. Yeah, I have to say no, because <laughs> when you learn neurolinguistic <laughs> programming, you learn that you have to start out from a creative place. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the tools that I use is called mind mapping. Now, I didn't invent mind mapping. It was invented by a guy named Tony Ball in England seven decades ago. But the idea of mind mapping is to take your central concept and draw a diagram around it with circles and squares and to just brainstorm ideas on how you're going to flesh out that topic. Mm -hmm. and so whenever I get stuck, I don't get blocked. I just go back to making a mind map and, and just throwing out ideas and playing with them until I know where I'm going next. And just like we said before, uh, before the break is uh, using that term empathy, it says here, writing for your reader. And how do you do that? Well, as we mentioned before, trying to place yourself into the uh, shoes of the other person that mm -hmm. you think might be the people who might be reading your yes. effort, your work. Say, what might they be looking for? What might they be hoping for? And then try to write your book along those lines of, to, to please the eventual person who might be reading your book. Those tens of thousands of readers that will be buying your book, you know, <laughs> hopefully someday. So uh, that's, that's certainly a good thing to keep in mind. And I know you have a couple other thoughts about uh, how to apply this business of being a better and more successful author. Something that has to do with writing with specificity. Now that's a very interesting word, and I managed to pronounce yes. that one. Uh, it was in your book, uh -huh. and that's something that people should keep in mind if they're uh, talking about writing this new book, becoming a new author, is writing with specificity, which means what, basically? I guess being specific. Yeah, but specificity goes to the meta model. And the meta model is a concept in neurolinguistic programming that is an analysis of language in terms of identify, in identifying where it is non specific, in terms of deletions, what might be left out, distortions, what might be vague and ambiguous and generalizations which might lump things into categories that tend to ignore 
individual variations and exceptions to the rule. And there's, there's nothing inherently wrong with deletions, distortions, and generalizations, but the meta model helps you identify where they are in case you want to add more specificity to your writing. And I talk about that extensively in my book. And then it mentions that using NLP, this Neuro Linguistics Program, that's part of the title of your book and contains so much in your book, is that NLP becomes part of that, which I guess is, as you mentioned before, to focus better, to be able to outline of where you want to go mm -hmm. and what you want to try to achieve, uh, using NLP to do that and becoming more specific instead of wandering all over the place, getting away from your central theme and your central topic of what you want this book to be all about. So NLP comes into play in that, in that yes. regard, so that's yeah. terrific. Another thing that, come, that you feature and, and highlight in your book a, a lot about, and something certainly which you're so, so f uh, familiar with because you're a master pr practitioner of hypno hypnotic therapy, hypno hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy is uh, using um, the, the term of hypnotically yes. to be able to produce a more effective and a more successful book. I talk about hypnotic writing in right. that book. And it's... And <laughs> It's been one of the most popular chapters. When I read reviews on the book, people say, I love that chapter on hypnotic writing. And hypnotic writing is not only persuasive, it causes people to add their own ideas. It, it invites people to participate in the thought process itself. Just by, before I talked about specificity, now I'm going to talk about being artfully vague, to communicate in such a way that the the reader can apply it to self in, in terms of bringing in his or her own background and ideas. Also, metaphors, analogies, even puns, and wordplay are an interesting way of doing hypnotic writing so that it means something to every, it means something different to every reader. Being a hypnotherapist as you are in your career, you're not going to come to people and say, come to me and I'll hypnotize you to write a better book. No. No, that's not part of it. Okay, I'm just being a little But I do here. some coaching with writers. Okay, yeah. well, that's terrific. That's part of your practice. Now, another one, uh, be a writer and, and use the term, uh, let's see if I can, pro prolifically, prolifically. Yes. What's that? Prolific writing requires self-motivation and self-discipline motivating yourself by writing about something that's meaningful. You know where you're going. You're using a process of previewing your work, organizing your work, and motivating yourself to put something on paper, and uh, then scheduling your time. The best writers, the most prolific writers, schedule time almost every single day to write, and it might be an hour a day, it might be 15 words a day or one page a day that they're going to write, but they develop this habit, this discipline. That's terrific. Now, uh, we have in our outline here, and Judy, the experienced and the professional and successful author and writer that you are, and hypnotherapist and all the other wonderful things that you are, speaker, life coach, author, and what have you, counselor, if you had to give one piece of advice, one germane piece of advice to those who would become successful writers or those of you out there watching our program who would like to improve your authors and your writing skills based on our uh, program today, what would that one piece of advice be if you had to narrow it down to one thing? <laughs> if I could say one thing, it would be that, you know, we all get writing assignments, like yeah. a boss or a teacher gives us something to write about, and there we don't have any choice. But when you have a choice, write about something that comes from your heart. Write about your interest and your passion. Of all the writers that I quoted in this book, all the writers that I interviewed for this book, and all the writers who, who gave me permission to use some of their ideas and materials in this book, they all said the same thing, write what you love. Terrific. I just got the two-minute warning, Judy, and you've been on the show so many times. You know that what that means that we're kind of winding down yeah. our program. I guess the best question I can ask now is where can we get this wonderful book entitled Improve Your Writing with NLP? It's on Amazon.com. Okay, and uh, maybe it's in the, some of the bookstores in the future, possibly. It, it might be on Barnes & Noble, and it's also available on Kindle. 
which is an e-reader. Okay, now you have a website, and uh, we're going to ask you for the website. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, watching our program and putting up uh, Judy Pearson's website at the bottom of your screen, many times, periodically during the course of our half-hour show, if you'd like to get in touch with Judy and find out all about her previous books, about this book, and about her hypno those, uh, <laughs> clinical hypnosis uh, business and practice that she has, feel free to contact that website, which is, again, www.com. HabitMaven.com. HabitMaven.com. Okay, let's start wrapping up. Uh, thank you so much, Judy, for being on the program. My pleasure, John. For the umpteenth time, uh, lots of success with the new book, uh, Improve Your Writing with NLP. Come back and see us again another time. And uh, say hi to John for us, your okay, husband. Okay, my husband, yep. And we will sign off now, ladies and gentlemen, by saying thank you so much for watching our show. We always go out by saying with our famous cliché, Keep on communicating for success. And for wonderful guests, for the umpteenth time, like our wonderful guest for tonight, Dr. Judy Pearson. Thank you again, Judy. Sure. And for the wonderful book that we've been talking about on our program tonight, again, Improve Your Writing with NLP. Neuro Linguistic Programming is what the NLP stands for. That's the acronym. And come back and see us again next week when we'll have another wonderful show for you. We thank you again so much for watching our program. And uh, we again thank our guests, and uh, we thank you for being our wonderful guests and watching our show at home on Channel 10 on Communicating Today. Bye-bye. We'll see you all next week. Take care.